This is a Bronx tale and it's his story. On the 35th anniversary of his classic one-man show, Jazz Palminteri is bringing it back to the New York City stage for one night only. In October 1st, for the first time ever, Chaz will do a post-show conversation with the audience. I had a chance to chat with Chaz Palminteri. 35 years. 35 years I wrote, I wrote a five-minute monologue about this killing that I saw when I was nine years old. I performed it for my theater workshop, then each week I would write a little more and a little more and then take out some, add some, and at the end of almost a year, I had 90 minutes of a one-person show. And you know the whole story, I got it produced, and my life changed. It's been 35 years, so I'm so excited to do it here in New York again, to be back on Broadway October 1st. But this one's gonna be different, dear. Okay. This one's gonna be different. When I say different is, this is the first time I'm gonna do a Q&A after the oh, show. Wow. We're going to sit down and people are going to ask questions about the one-man show, the movie, the musical, how all three happened. It's never been done before. It's the first time it's ever been done where the same person wrote the uh, one-person show, the movie, the musical, and started all three. Could you even conceive when you did that the first time, the first five minutes of <laughs> no. it? Could you even begin to conceive? It, what wasn't something you were planning to no, do? You were... I wrote it. I was hoping to get an agent. <laughs> you got more than that. It sure did. I was, I was trying that. to get an agent at the time. So I said, I want to do something really spectacular. I had this idea of doing a whole movie on stage by myself and play all the parts. And people thought I was crazy. They said, that can't never work, you know? And I said, well, yeah, it'll work. They said, well, you, you can't change costumes. You can't. I said, no, I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to do it with lights and sound. And Some, it, somebody thought it worked. Somebody, somebody we know well. <laughs> we know well. We know very well, yes. Bob De Niro, when I wrote the script of Bronx Tale, the, the screenplay, Bob De Niro made that movie the classic that it is. I've always said that. You know, a bad director could mess up a great script. Mm -hmm. it, it was a great script, and, and Bob De Niro just made it sing, you know. And you put Arthur Avenue on the map as a result of that. Yeah. You know? I, I, Arthur Avenue, Belmont Avenue, I, I definitely put it on the map. I mean, it, it was a little famous before. There were some great actors that came out of the Bronx, too. But I think, uh, you know, I really made it kind of explode, yeah. Have you been back in a while? Are there, you still have the favorite places? You I still... go back all the time. You I do? go back once a month. Wow. I go to uh, Gino's Pastry if I want my really great cannolis. And I go to Mike Stelly and Casa Mozzarella and Tidal Brothers and all the great restaurants, Roberto's and Regaletto's and Enzo's. Uh, there's just great, if, great shopping there, great places to eat, uh, great people. You buy the real deal there. I mean, look, there's a, a Little Italy in Manhattan, which is great. But to me, the real Little Italy is in the Bronx. Now I want to talk about one thing because we talked about this last time, your dad, and the words he said to you that changed your life. My dad said the words, the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. He told me that. He wrote it on a card and he put it in my room and I never, ever forgot that. I, it was one of those things, and that was the thing that made me write A Bronx Tale. I just got fired. I was working as a doorman. I ran out of money from my acting jobs. Uh, then I took a job as a doorman. Finally, I got, I got fired. Swifty Lazar, the famous agent, fired me because I wouldn't let him into his own party. Oh, God. <laughs> well, he was really nasty to me. That's why I did that. All right, it's all right, then. And then I went home, and I looked at the card, and I said, well, if they won't give me a great part, I'll write one myself. And I started to write about this killing that I saw. I mean, I always, I always carry a, a, one of those cards in my wallet. Mm -hmm because in case I meet an actor or somebody and they stop me on the street and they, want, and they ask me, oh, you know, you inspired me. And I say, what's your name? I, say, I, take, I open up, take out my wallet. I, I take out the card and I, I say, let me write your name down. I said, here, say this thing in life is a waste of time. And I give it to him. So I interviewed you a long time ago for a Bronx Tale. Yes. I gave you a card. Yes. Look at it. I have one on me right now. And I put tape and I carry it with me. That's fine. Well, you make sure you're Ever since. You have, you have children. I don't have children. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. Well, you make sure you, you give that to someone. I have a little you nephew that I'm going to pass this along to. Absolutely, you should. Those words change your life. Those words change my life. I have a, a really successful podcast, Chaz Parliamentary Show. I talk about success and about changing lives. And the people that call me and say, you've changed my life. And there's nothing more that makes me excited when I hear that. 
My son got off drugs because of your movie. He came to see your play. I took my son to see it, and now he has great grades. I go, oh, wow, okay. You don't, you don't know who your words affect, right? I am so humbled by it. I'm humbled by it. I mean, I, I always tell people, go on my podcast, and I do shout outs to people, you know. I said, you having trouble with your son? Call up. They can go to chazpalmateri.net and everything is on there. The schedule of my one-man shows, okay. my podcast, my merchandise, chazpalmateri.net. Now let's talk one more Chaz Palmateri thing. Got a restaurant not too far from here. I got two <laughs> restaurants. I got one oh. restaurant not too far from here, right? Okay, here. right. Chaz Palmateri's. It's on uh, 46th Street, 30 West 46th Street, five-star restaurant. It's not no pizzeria. It's a great restaurant. How's it's, that feel to walk in there, walk past that door and see your name up there? You know what? That's It's exciting. It's a, yeah. just a great, great restaurant. Look, I never say my restaurant is the best Italian restaurant in New York. I never would say that because there's great restaurants mm -hmm. in New York. Is my restaurant one of the best, one of the top? Absolutely. And I have another one in White Plains, New York, in White Plains. Different than this one, a little more casual than the one in White Plains. We serve pizza there. But both of my restaurants, knock on wood, are doing great. And we've been in business now five years, and wow. it's doing great.